The Small Business Show, episode 210 for Wednesday, February 13th, 2019. Thanks, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business. Uh, sponsors for this episode include abbyconnect.com slash SBS and textexpander.com slash podcast. We'll talk more about those in a minute here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good, 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 good. We're uh, doing well out here, and I'm not, I promised I wouldn't talk about the weather, so I'm going to skip that old man conversation. <laughs> and get, yeah. We're going to get right into it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about uh, travel all the time on the show, and we've had done some episodes on you know using your points from your credit card and how you know travel and everything is part of the whole. Uh, charmed life concept that we that we talk about uh, frequently as a small business owner. So today, you know, we get a chance to talk with someone who's been on the other side of the travel business, um, you know, running travel and lifestyle businesses for a long time. Gilbert Goodero has started, built, and he's managed uh, a number of travel and lifestyle businesses, including JustLux.com and his latest venture, HotelsVillasDirect.com. Thank you for joining us today, Gilbert. We're really happy to have you. You're welcome, Shannon. Nice to be here. Yeah, that's cool. So I, I have a ton of questions. Uh, I'm a question guy. So l l let's start. H how did you get into this travel and lifestyle business? I know you've been doing it for a while. Well, it's my, my second career. So my first career, I spent about 20 years in the IT industry, um, working in, in senior management in, in marketing roles. And then mm -hmm. in 2004, uh, my brother founded a site called JustLux.com, which is a luxury lifestyle and travel publication, which grew to reach about 1.5 million uh, visitors. In 2007, I left the IT industry and I went to, to join him and I used some of what I've learned from, from a technology platform standpoint and the IT side of things. And so I joined JustLux as president in 2007. Um, in 2010, uh, Rob and I, my brother, um, we co-founded a company called the RGM Alliance, which was a digital travel and lifestyle network. And we worked with about 325 premium publishers and we reached about 90 million uh, visitors a month, that, that particular uh, wow. uh, network. And so we did that for, for, for two years and then we ended up selling that business, the RGM Alliance business. And we sold it to a company uh, and then we rebranded the company called the RGM Group. In the RGM Group, we ended up being the exclusive media representation firm for OpenTable.com, the largest restaurant reservation platform. Oh. Um, and so that was in 2012. And so then I left Just Lux at that time and I went over to the new business. Uh, I first started as the COO of the new business uh, and then I ended up as the CRO. Uh, during the tenure there, my team and I, we sold you know, probably over a million dollars with the digital advertising campaigns to premier hospitality groups, spirit brands, entertainment brands across the globe. Uh, in addition, when working with those brands digitally on selling advertising on, on OpenTable, we also probably activated over a thousand different restaurants uh, for our, our advertising campaigns where we would, for a spirit brand, we would do a, a digital campaign campaign. Um, in targeting restaurants, and we would try to drive visitation to the spirit brand partner restaurants, as well as try to drive consumption of, of the brand's product at, at those particular restaurants. And so over the time, we, we, we developed a lot, of, a lot of technology that was useful in the hospitality in, industry. Um, and so then in 2018, um, I got back together with Rob. Uh, and we we formed um, Hotels Villas Direct. That's so, cool. That's, that's a lot of stuff. Up here. <laughs> a lot of yeah, stuff. A lot of yeah. Stuff. For a second <laughs> career, that's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I'm 100. I'm 110. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You and, don't know. It feels like 90 yeah. years. <laughs> just, just so listeners know, uh, Rob Godero was our guest almost three years ago on this show, episode 50. So we'll put a link has to that in the long? show notes. It wow. has. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Actually, you know what? It was over three years ago. It was end of January, 2016. 
Yeah. Wow. So sounds yeah. like we got to have him back on here. Sometime. I know. I know. Yeah. So, no, yeah. Okay. So uh, I, that's, that's a, it's an impressive, uh, you know, setup here. L- let me just ask you one question. Cause I, uh, you know, never having worked like in the corporate world and, you know, kind of thing, w- what do you like better? I mean, do the pros outweigh the cons when you're out on your own building your own platform and trying to get your own business off the ground or versus working for a larger entity, um, what, what, what's your preference? My preference is, is definitely working on my own in my own business. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it has a lot of challenges. You know, in, yeah. a, in the corporate world, I, I work 12-hour days. When you have your own business, it's 24-hour days, seven <laughs> days a week. Yeah. You know, you're always That's, thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I, I have, uh, uh, I'm trying to decide what's the best way to, to write notes in the middle of the night when I wake up with an idea on the new business. Do I, you know, take a note? On my iPhone, do I write it on a pad paper? But I'm constantly thinking. So, that's so what, what is the answer for that? Because that's a helpful thing for small business owners. Yeah. The, the answer, what I do is I say, hey, Siri, send an email. And I send myself an email in the subject so I get it in the morning. So ah, I'll probably so, send so, myself emails at uh, three at night. Okay. So we, we, we like told it. you all the words not to say, now I know that I need to also add the, Hey, S lady and Amazon, <laughs> a lady okay. and all That's of that. True, so huh? we, we apologize to our listeners here, but there you go. <laughs> Everybody in the car. So, yeah. so I asked my device to go. send an email reminder to me and it works well for if I'm, if I'm driving. Yeah. Um, or if I'm sleeping. So that's typically what I'm doing. I like it. That's uh, smart. I like that. Yeah. 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 It is. You make, you make a good point, you know, where it's, it's really a 24 seven thing and uh, you become just embedded in this, uh, this whole process. Um, uh, and, and I love that. And then also sometimes, you know, uh, it, it, it can get a little uh, rough when you can't step away from it. Well, absolutely. And then as, as a small business owner, now you're, now you're, now you have to make payroll. Yeah, right? that's different when you're working for a, a, a corporation. And then yeah. it's what I like. It's just a faster pace of business and decision making. You know, in, 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 I worked for General Electric for, for six years. And so, as you can imagine, there was a slow pace of, of making decisions. And as, as a business owner, you can make these decisions right away. So I enjoy that that part of it as well as this the speed of of how everything how fast everything goes. Yeah, yeah that's a real that's a good point. Yeah, that's a great. Point. That was my frustration with corporate America too. Was was most definitely the 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 sluggishness of of waiting for something to happen when you knew you could just do it. Let's just do it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, and especially in in my background, I I sold to the federal government. That was my oh. customer base. Oh, wow. IT. And so then I dealt with all the legal and, 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 and corporate compliance of dealing with the federal government as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's like in, in the mud. OK, so let, let's talk about Hotels Villas Direct. And what was the concept behind this this new business that you're starting up? And what does the uh, or what do you guys offer to, to customers? Well, so when Rob and I got back together, why we got back together, we saw a gap in the book direct in the best rate guarantee space of the hospitality industry. So you you see it all the time. You see choice hotels with Bada Book, Bada Boom, Book Direct, and you see the Hilton and and the Marriott. And so what we saw over the last three years is we saw millions of, hundreds of millions of dollars being poured into, into the Book Direct space by hotel brands that are trying to convince consumers to no longer book through an OTA, but to Book directly on the hotels. What's an OTA? An OTA, I'm sorry, is an okay. online travel agency. It's, ah. like, it's, it's like Expedia Booking.com. I see. And, and today, those OTAs uh, represent about 50% of the of the bookings that go on across the world, and that's all property classes. And so, the the hotel hospitality or the hotel industry in 2016 did about. Five hundred billion dollars worth of worldwide revenue, and about half of that went through an OTA. I got it. The, and, and so the thought is—I mean, was the thought that oh, or, or is it that way? The hotels they make more money when they get that customer and don't have to pay that OTA. Correct. So, uh. so, so what it is is hotels. Hotels appreciate the the revenues they get to from OTAs, but those that that revenue comes at a cost. And there's 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 three main points that it's it's costly for a, a hotel. One is from a from a, a profitability standpoint, uh, the OTAs 
started back in the 90s. Uh, and then they, they started mostly with, with airline industries. In 2001, after 9-11, there was a huge drop in, in, the, in the travel industry, as, as you guys probably remember. Yeah. Sure. So the OTA stepped up and they reached out to the hotels and they started providing their, their marketing services to the hotels. And the hotels, because they were desperate, jumped on board, but they negotiated, the OTAs negotiated some very, very high commission rates. And so today, an OTA, a hotel probably pays an OTA anywhere from 18 to 30 percent commission on their sale. Wow. Or on a, a standard travel agent like we are, they, they'll pay a travel standard travel agent anywhere from seven and a half to 10 percent. So what we're doing by helping entering the book direct and supporting the, the hotels and their book direct initiatives is helping them re regain their profitability and, and cutting their commission costs up to up to 100% um, by just having direct bookings. Oh, in yeah. Addition, in, in addition to it is now when we send a direct booking from our site directly to the hotel site, the hotel is also getting the, the data footprint of the consumer as well. So today... When a, when a consumer purchases through an OTA, the OTA captures the, the consumer's digital footprint. If the consumer makes a reservation for that hotel uh, on the OTA's website, the, the, the OTA only sends the, the reservation header information over to the hotel. So the hotel's not getting any of the, the digital data footprint of the, of the converter but more importantly, of the booking abandonment. So typically right. on, oh, on, yeah. on a nice luxury hotel or a premium hotel where we work, their conversion rates is, 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 is two to 3%. So for every 100 person that comes to an OTA's hotel landing page, two of those people convert 98% or 98%, 98 of them abandon. And the, and the OTA is retargeting those people. Got it. Since we're pushing the data back directly to the OTA, I mean to the hotels, now the hotels have access to that data and they can retarget that data as well. So that's ah. a huge benefit for the hotel. Yeah, and you know, that, that phrase digital footprint scares me and excites me at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the stuff going on with Europe and everything else, it, it, it should, but it, it's anonymized it's nomin anonymized data yeah. that we're able to improve the user's experience. Um, yeah. so it's, it's very useful. And then thirdly, and, and probably just as important as the profitability and the data is the customer service relationship today. When, a when a OTA takes that reservation, uh, the hotel didn't set the customer's expectation of, of when they were coming to the property, what type of room type to expect. Oh, yeah. So that's all done at, 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 the, the OTA level. And so when the consumer shows up at the property, if there's a problem with the reservation or the room type, they have to, in most cases, call the OTA. So when yeah. you're dealing directly with the hotel, now the consumer only has one throat to choke from a server's perspective. So the OTA owns the relationship from the pre-stay. I mean, the hotel now owns the relationship from pre-stay all the way to post-stay and, and billing. And so oh, it yeah. really makes for a much more complete customer service experience. Yeah, I love that. I love that one throat to choke. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have to remember that and tie that and make that comment because that's a, that's a good one. I, I that, that's fascinating the the different levels and depths of uh you know, how this, how this whole process works. And, you know, from someone that's totally on the outside as a consumer, I mean, it's, it is fascinating to hear that. No, it, it makes sense. I'm curious, in addition to all the GDPR stuff that's going on, you know, browsers are clamping down on like cross site tracking and things like that. Is, is there a, I assume there's a benefit there for the hotels to have that direct relationship versus, you know, something that's, that's, you know, one step removed that they, they can't see, they, they have no visibility anymore past that, past that point. Oh, right? Absolutely. And, and, and what we're able to do is provide transparency and visibility for the hotels, um, both on our sister sites that, that help drive traffic to hotels. Bills direct that's justlux.com and Sojourn Bull. They're they're basically content sites and, and almost lead qualification sites for yeah. us. We're a lot of travel content, and then those folks are coming from those sites to Hotels Bills Direct. And then what the hotels really like about being on our platform is we're able to share a lot of the insights um, 
that are going on on our platform that maybe the OTA wouldn't. So we, mm. you know, we can talk to a hotel in Hawaii and say, hey, we're, here's what we're seeing with people who are searching on our platform right now for Hawaii. And they're looking 45 or 60 days out at these particular locations. And so we're able to share that information with our hotel and not give them specific information, but, but give them insights so they can start planning for making adjustments to to what they might be up offering those consumers during the, that time frame. So That's there's awesome. a lot of interesting data that we get to provide a hotel as being a, a booking or a hotel search engine. So I want to point something out to folks who are listening here. Um, you know, Hotels Villas Direct does not exist on an island, uh, so to speak. You, it, it, it is, um, it's a business, it's its own business, of course, but it's a business that evolved from you having these other websites, like you said, that, that generate leads that point to these types of things. Now you could have, you know, joined affiliate programs for these hotels and perhaps maybe you did with just Lux in the past or whatever, but, but there's a lesson here, folks pay attention to where you're sending your customers next, right? Especially if you've got some sort of a content site um, or content offering, where are people going when they leave? If lots of people are going to one type of place, well, maybe that's your next business play, just like Hotels Villas Direct is here for the Gotoro brothers. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's, that's very cool. Uh, and, and I, we're Shannon, gonna, we're I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take a second here and talk sure. about our two sponsors, if you guys don't mind. So uh, take a minute, get some water and uh, and I will I will uh, we will be you will be right back. <laughs> we will be right back with uh, with Gilbert and Shannon here. But uh, I want to talk about our first sponsor, which is Abby Connect at abbyconnect.com slash SBS. You know, we're talking a lot about the value of uh Knowing who didn't stop and leave you a message. Well, if all your business has is voicemail, you might not know who didn't leave you a message. And there is huge value in having a human being answer the phone for you, for your business. And that's where Abby Connects live receptionist comes in. These are people that are all working at Abby Connects own place right there in Las Vegas. So they're all in the same building answering the phone for your business. This is a very cool thing. We've tested it out. These people are trained to answer the phone for you, knowing how your business works, what questions you want to ask people. They can take messages, of course, but they can also, in the right scenario, direct people to, uh, you know, they can forward the call, say to you, either at your desk or on your cell phone, whatever works, because you get an entire team of professional, courteous receptionists available whenever you need them with Abby Connect. Uh, and it's at a fraction of the cost of what it would take to hire one person full time. And the cool part is you can use it when you need it. Sure. If you want it all the time. Great. If you just want it when you're out of the office. Great. They work on your schedule. And that way you can work more efficiently. You can interface with your customers better and you can boost your profit profitability because Abby Connect is right there for you. So I know Abby Connect will make a strong impact on your business and we've worked out a deal to get you started. No obligation free trial at abbyconnect.com slash SBS. And then after your trial, you get 95 bucks off your first bill. So take advantage of this now. Sign up at abbyconnect.com slash SBS. That's where you have to go to get the free trial and the 95 bucks off your first bill. Again, that's abbyconnect.com slash SBS, of course, and our thanks to Abby Connect for sponsoring this episode. Our second sponsor today is Text Expander, where at textexpander.com slash podcast, you can sign up for this service slash app. It's really two things that worked well together, like taste great together, that allows you to take all those things that you type over and over again, long emails, short customer service responses, even responses to like little text messages or whatever, and you build them into snippets and then you can invoke them either with a click of a mouse, the tap on your, your screen, or by typing a little shortcut that then expands, hence text expander, into whatever you've created. You know how important customer service responses are and you want to have them right. But you don't want to take five minutes to proofread 
the same one every time. You also don't want to dig back through your email to find the one that you sent to the last customer, copy it, paste it in, make some changes. No, no, that's inefficient. Have it right there at your fingertips with Text Expander. You can even have it enter form fields so that the customer's name is right there. Maybe the product they bought is right there. It asks you for this. That way you don't screw it up because when we move quickly, we all screw things up. Text Expander makes us look like perfectionists. And that's a good thing, especially when you're dealing with your customers. And you can share all your snippets, too. They sync amongst not only all your devices, but all the devices of all your team members. So you can write the responses. or You can have the best person on your team write the responses. And then everybody gets to use them 100% of the time. So t- stay consistent. Stay accurate with Text Expander. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast to learn more and... You get 20% off the cost of your first year. Our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. And our thanks to you, Gilbert, for hanging out with us. And uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing more. So, Shannon, you want to take the next one? Yeah, yeah. I, I, talking about uh, competitive advantage and things, you know, both those uh, sponsors uh, really make, can make a big difference in how your small business looks. That's how it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. So, Okay, Gil, you kind of alluded to, you mentioned, uh, is it Sojourn? So, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> but, Sojourn. So, Sojourn Boulevard okay. as an online magazine and Just Lux, the website. Um, and and I, I have a question also, you know, about how you acquire customers. And I, I think this all ties in and it, it, I'd love for you to talk about something I think you guys have done such a great job with uh, your your travel and lifestyle businesses is this content creation and how you've used it to acquire customers. Okay. Well, let me, let, let's, let's step back just one quick second and sure. give the audience a little bit better feel for what the, the business is. So the okay. parent company is called HVD, Hotels Villas Direct Marketing Inc. And we're, it's an umbrella company. And under, we position ourselves as a lead generation platform and a travel publishing group from a lead generation platform, that's Hotels Villas Direct. And then our travel publishing group is our sister publications, JustLux.com and Soldier and Boulevard. So JustLux.com, as we explained, is an affluent luxury lifestyle publication that's been around since 2004. Uh, today it reaches over uh, 400,000 unique monthly visitors and has a very high HHI, uh, the audience does it, over What's What's the HHI? Uh, household income oh, got household okay, income great. of yep. over $150,000. Awesome. So when we got into the business and we were working with Just Lux, we were in the hot- the luxury hotel space. We knew that we wanted to uh, expand out of luxury and go down one, one layer deeper, which is called the premium layer, uh, if you look at hotels. And so what we did is when we formed Hotels Villas Direct, we initially went out and we looked at 15000 four and five star hotels, luxury and premium hostel hotels across the world. <clears throat> and then we looked and saw which one of those hotels had offered consumers their best rate, offered consumers a best rate guarantee if you book direct. And so we, we've identified 3,500 of those properties and we've onboarded those properties onto our platform. So Hotels Villas Direct has about 3,500 uh, best rate luxury and premium uh, properties on the website. We use just Lux, the content on Just Lux, to help attract that luxury audience for the luxury portion of Hotels Villas Direct, but to reach the the aspirational affluent audience, what I would say would be millennials who make over ninety five thousand dollars and above. We needed another site, and so we created Sojourn Boulevard oh. to reach that aspirational traveler, experienced traveler, the millennial. Um, and so those are our two main feeder sites that feed, again, the luxury audience and the premium audience into Hotels Villas Direct. In addition to those two sites, and going back to your original question of how we, we drive traffic to the site in general. Sure. As a publisher group, we have, we have, one, emails, we have email subscribers, over 1.5 million email subscribers. We have a social media following of over 750 um, thousand social media fans on the platforms. And so we, we, we leverage um, those, that nice. audience as well to, to drive to Hotels Villas Direct. And then the most important thing about Hotels Villas Direct is first, we're a B2B platform first. So as a lead generation platform, 
we're generating leads for hotels. So we're going out and we're selling hotels, advertising and providing them access to those leads. And so our first two major customers are hotels and then tourism boards that work with a hotel. So we're out selling advertising to those businesses and then we're trying to generate consumers back to those businesses. And so when I sell a hotel an advertising package, let's say it's $5,000 annually, right? I need to go and generate for, for them uh, a return on ad spend ratio, which ROAS of about yeah. 10 to one. So I need to generate about $50,000 with the bookings for them. And so what we do as a, as a marketing platform is first is we take care of our paid hotel partners, right? Because we need them to get the return on investment that lo they're looking for for their investment and the traffic and booking that we're, we're generating for them. Secondly, then, um, then I'm looking just to drive overall consumer traffic to the website to book on any of the hotels that happen to be on our platform. So initially we go after the, the B2B side, we're taking care of our B2B customers. And then we're, we're starting to look at more of the consumer stuff as well. Does that all make sense? Yeah, <laughs> it does make sense. It's it's fascinating all the different layers of uh, you know how this works, um, and you know the the content creation and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, yeah. it it's impressive. I, I think it's 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 fantastic. Yeah. It seems to me, mm -hmm. look looking at it from the outside, that you know there is. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff out there for travel and travel sites and the OTA sites and all that stuff. I mean, how do you is it the content creation and that kind of thing that that you guys use to make yourself stand out? The, the content absolutely helps us stand out, but it's okay. it's really the in addition to the 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 lead generation platform itself and what we're able to do. So if you look at our solutions, we have three families or three what we call three pillars uh, of solutions. One would be custom content. One is the search engine. And then one is our digital solution. So our custom content is, is, our, is, our, is our core traffic driving solution. We know that, you know, we have, again, 12 years of, or 15 years of content on Just Lux. I know the, 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 the life cycle of, of content, historic content on Just Lux. And then I know that if we write this custom article about the 10 beach, the 10 best wedding destinations in, in Miami, I know that that custom, that content's gonna, is going to attract so many visitors in year one. And then it's going to attract so many v visitors through its, out, its, life, its lifespan. So I know that in year one, if, if that article hits 2,000 people, I'm going to hit another 2,000 people over the next five years. And I so see. that's the value of that content is what we can get targeted to support our mission. And our mission for, for this year, because Hotels Village Direct is, 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 is a new business, is sure. we're focused in on, on two large feeder markets. One is California travelers and one is Miami travelers. And if you think uh -huh. about people who live in California or Miami, they really travel – to half the people in those states travel to the markets that touch them. So we know that 50% of, of people in California are traveling to Hawaii, traveling to Arizona, traveling to Las Vegas. 45% of people in Florida are going to, to Atlanta or to South Carolina or to other markets within Florida. Yep. And so we're focused in on those markets. And then we know those two feeder markets, there's actually, they touch 29 destination markets or are Right. So Hawaii, Oahu would be one destination market. And so what we do is we're we're generating a, a lot of custom content to support nice. all the traffic for those 29 destination markets. And so that's where our our content effort is focused, is 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 focusing and supporting the destination markets. And then our marketing activities are supporting the feeder markets. And we're doing direct mail and social media to the people that live in California, trying to encourage them to go to Hawaii or go to Las Vegas. So That's wait, cool. I have a, I have a content related question because I've got some mm -hmm. content business. Oh, this is a content business for, you know, for that matter, but, but I have others. And, and so I'm curious when you're, it sounds to me like when it's time to think about, you know, the week's worth or the month's worth of content that you're putting together, are, are you focused solely on or solely primarily, I want to say on, on 
creating these these funnels for for lack of a better term that that might you know feed these markets and and drive these conversions for you or is there some level of it where you're prioritizing oh we have these readers that come to us looking for x y or z we need to make sure we publish things about x y or z not because they're going to feed to directly to something else but we know we need to retain our our readership or is retaining readership not really a concern in today's SEO driven world for you it's it's more of conversion based than okay and, and when you look at conversion base, you look at the needs of your of your paying customer, and then is the consumer as well. Yeah, so you try to balance the need of both. Okay, but it's 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 a tightrope. But yeah, in, in, in most cases, in most cases, if if the content works for your customer, well, that means a lot of consumers are, are reading it because they're interested in it. So it's 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 got to be content that works for both. It, it sure, yeah. of course. Sure. Yeah. OK. Yeah. But but every piece of content, it, it, if I'm if I'm understanding you correctly, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, it sounds like every piece of content definitely has your customers in mind as well as your your you know consumers slash readers. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's Fascinating. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it is. OK, so I, I want to put you on the spot here. We, we ask everybody on the, that comes on the show this question, and uh, it's probably because, you know, I've made so many mistakes and I've learned from them. And I know it may be hard for you to find one that you've made because you've had so much fast experience. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if, if you look back on a mistake that, you know, in your career, whether it's corporate, in your own business, uh, you know, that really taught you the most and stuck with you, what, what would you say that is? Well, in the new business stuff, it's it's really understanding capital and cash flow. Yeah. It's you know that's that's probably the the, the biggest challenge because as you're building a business, you want to make sure that you you can afford to get it to a point, and then you can afford to get it to the next next it's it's next KPIs. So that's probably the, the biggest thing is understanding the cash flow requirement, and then yeah. trying to find people that under that share your vision and that might want to help invest in in, in your. Um, yeah. Your businesses, sure, yeah, sure. That makes, and then that. I think just in, for and then for us and with hotels specifically with hotels villas direct, I think some of the initial challenges that we had is is trying to educate the the our B two B partners or our investors that this is really a B two B play first, and then the consumer play second because in the they all know that in the as you started off the. The, the segment is the travel industry is very, very competitive. And to yeah. get any kind of noise or to compete here, it's very, very difficult to do. So we're, we're focused on being a B2B partner first and then the going after consumers. And so that was difficult for us as we started going is trying to explain that to people to understand that the business model first is we're again, like I said, we're a lead generation platform first yeah. and then a consumer travel publication second. Yeah, it sounds yeah, it, it's really complex, and I imagine getting it into a, a you know a, a small enough little bite when you're trying to attract those people can can be challenging. Um, yes, that's for sure. So a, a, as we wrap things up here, um, you know we've got thousands of other small business owners that are that are listening right now. Um, you know if if you could if you could offer a, a piece of advice to those folks based on your experience, what, what would you what would you say to them? I would think the, the the biggest thing is is trying to leverage, trying to figure out how to leverage your customers as in many ways as possible. So not only from generating income, but generating leads, referrals, um, ideas. Um, it's really trying to get the most, uh, trying to figure out how to get the most out of your customers. Our yeah. customers, a lot of our customers, especially on the hotel side of things, I I call a frenemy. Right, we have. I'm trying to get money from them, right? So they're yep. not they don't love me so much, but we have <laughs> we, we have the same we have the same mission or objectives, which is to get people to to book direct on the hotel's website. Sure. Either they'll so we're encouraging people either to go directly to the brand's help website if they have that preferred brand, or search on Hotels Villas Direct to discover your brand style and then go book directly on the stand the brand. So yeah. we're being so in doing so, the people I'm selling to, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars, like I said earlier, uh, marketing book direct initiatives. And so they want to work with us. So even though I I'm, I'm, I compete with their messaging a little bit, even though it's the same messaging, I'm just another s- source. 
I still add value to them. So yeah, that's interesting, can, right? I, they would they would know, rather get the customer. They would rather get the customer directly without having you send them their way. But correct, you send them their way, and they don't, they and they like that because you and could send them money. elsewhere. Yeah. yeah, and you save money over the OTA. And uh, yep. one of the things I loved uh, scouring through your website was the phrase, you know, we're uh, a travel search engine, which I thought was really a, mm-hmm. a, a good uh, snippet of data because I hadn't really heard that as much anymore or, you know, focused on that where you're just trying to provide that, you know, information to the customer. That was cool. Yeah, that was and good. It's, it's amazing to see the data. I love that's probably one of the most enjoyable things I have at the end of the day. It's just to go back and look at the data of the people that are coming in and, and what what they're what they're looking at, where they're going. And it's just you you then you can look at that and you can go, oh, I can make all these other business decisions now. Yeah, so, that's killer. It, it, having, if there's if there's yeah. one thing I think people should take away from from listening to you talk here, it and, and I think they probably already have, but just in case. It's pay. Look at the value that you've created by simply paying attention to data. I mean, I, I don't mean to d- dismiss all the other things you've done, but it really starts with pay attention to the data and and learn from it and let it at least give you hints as to what to do next. It, it may not be your deciding factor, but it certainly can shine some lights that are that are worth following down. Yeah, that's Absolutely. killer. Well, that's good. I mean, we really appreciate you taking the time to educate us here. I know a lot more about, uh, you know, what, what's going on on the back end. I'm ready to go on vacation. And I also wanted to say, when you get that cash flow thing figured out, please let me know, because <laughs> I, I've had that problem many, 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 many times. Uh, what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about uh, your business and to connect with you, Gil? So they can visit the site, Hotels Villas Direct. Or they can send me an email at, at Gilbert G at Hotels Villas Direct.com. That's awesome. Thank you again. We really appreciate it. Uh, once again, I've learned the most here, which, uh, you know, that's okay with me. <laughs> that's awesome. And thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks so much, Gil. This has been great, man. It's, it's fascinating, really fascinating to, to listen to how you approach things. It's awesome. So thanks, folks. See us at businessshow.co. Keep living that charmed life, and we'll see you next week.